Hi everyone, welcome to Heart to Heart Pod, a safe space to have honest and vulnerable conversations to connect and heal our hearts. Hi Wes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> good to see you again. <laughs> yes, good to see you again. And welcome back to Korea Talk, everyone. Ah, uh, I can't believe this is the last episode of, of this, this series. How many have we done so far now? Yeah, um, actually, that was my question for you. My pop quiz question <laughs> for you was, do you remember how many episodes we have? Well, in the notes, it says <laughs> episode 14. So I'm guessing we, right. we've done 14. Well, we, <laughs> no, <laughs> but we do have a lot of episodes because mm -hmm. this was supposed to be a mini series, right? But mm -hmm. we actually recorded seven episodes. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I know. And this is our final episode. So I can't believe it's it's actually coming to an end. Yeah. Because we started in 2020. <laughs> All right. <laughs> our first episode in 2020. Um, and for our final episode, this is an exciting one because we're gonna talk about like our final memories in Korea, um, some of our lessons learned and tips, advice, anything that you have and a bit about life after Korea as well. Yes. Yeah, I'm really excited when I looked <laughs> over different questions and discussion points. Um, it's just a great way to kind of uh, finish this series. And um, yeah, I'm just so glad to be able to work on this um, podcast with you, Tina. You've done an amazing job organizing it, doing all the hard work. <laughs> so I'm just glad I could help contribute. And um, this is going to be something really fun to look at even years down the road, you know, mm -hmm. when we're trying to reminisce about our times. Yeah. Um, a lot of this stuff could get forgotten, but for this impactful year of our lives, it's nice to know that we have so much of it saved via this podcast. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad we, we, we've done this. And also, you really remember all the details. <laughs> you seem to have a really good memory. Um, and so I actually wanted to ask you this question about our podcast and uh, the series and it is out of all the episodes that we've done what was your favorite like what was your favorite topic hmm, there's so many fun topics um i would say it was fun talking about anything related to culture i guess so like the mm -hmm. cultural differences um the way the school was it was so different from like my school growing up um obviously but and just having a role of, of being the only you know foreigner in the whole school i just think all those unique experiences were just so fun to discuss just having that i just love trying different things like when i go to a convenience store in korea or in america i always try <laughs> to find a new thing to have a new experience and i think what was my my favorite part about korea was having daily new experiences that just kept right. things so yeah. fresh you know yeah every day every yeah. day was like something new yeah on your feet <laughs> it really does and it makes life seem more interesting i don't know i like i like trying new things um like that so how about for you what was your favorite topic um i have to agree with that too i was thinking back like they were also fun the episodes that we did and topics that we talked about uh definitely the culture shock episode like our experiences we had so much information that we had to uh, carry it over to our next episode I remember <laughs> like we just kept talking about all these different experiences these culture shock experiences and then of course that episode the Jim Javon experience that I shared oh, where we yeah. just laughed. <laughs> and I was, was like great. did not expect myself to cry on that episode <laughs> so that was a lot of fun yeah so, yes everyone uh, for those of you who are new here uh, tune into our previous episodes where Wes and I we share our living and teaching about experiences and we talk about culture shock so yeah um to begin i would love to ask you wes about any last memories that you would like to share about your year-long experience in korea to your audience for sure um uh, you know i saw how many you wrote down so i i figured i'd put <laughs> chip in i'd chip in a few as well um uh, it's really say. one one story for me, but anyways. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, my mine might be shorter, with a little few more. So I don't know. I just wanted to reiterate how fascinating and shocking the talent shows are for those of you that are working in middle schools in Korea, and 
my school growing up in the U.S., rural town in Missouri. I don't like to say rural, sorry, small town, USA. Um, town shows were so totally like the most casual thing ever. There was no money put into it. People just showed up, like they juggled or they played the clarinet. You know, uh, that was the U.S. talent show experience. So I was expecting something similar um, in my in the Korean middle school, but that was not the case. They hired a professional. Um, like lights and sound person for this talent show. The students were practicing for like two months and everything was recorded and, and uploaded into YouTube. And there really was no limitations on what they could perform. There was Taekwondo, there was music, there was some dancing. And the dancing primarily was with Korean pop. Um, but mm -hmm. Not even like the cutesy, innocent Korean pop, like the, you know, more adult oriented um, K pop. And that was surprising to me, given that they were middle school students. But yeah, there was no, I guess, limitations on art at this. And it was such a big deal. And it really, and I'll get into it later, but it really was the culmination of the semester was this was this talent show overall mm -hmm. and then i'll get to that a little bit later but, but that was a, a big surprise just something you don't expect to be a big deal because it isn't a big deal in your home country doesn't mean that's the same in another country so you can't always that's what kept, made it fun though just like your my expectations were completely <laughs> unraveled once i saw the scale of this talent show um so that was a lot of fun um Another experience I really enjoyed, I think I talked about this a little bit earlier in, in the series, was going to my friends' weddings. I had the pleasure of um, meeting friends I made that were exchange students in the USA, and then I got to Korea and I went to their weddings. One was a more traditional wedding, and one was like a modern wedding in a real yeah. fancy area in Seoul. So I got to see both yeah. um, experiences, and it was just really culturally enriching. Um, the way we do weddings in the USA is quite drawn out <laughs> overall, but these Korean weddings were quite short and to the point, but very beautiful. Um, so I just recommend if you have an opportunity to go to weddings in Korea to definitely do it because it kind of just shows you a, a different kind of way of doing it and from two very different perspectives because like the traditional wedding they all dressed up like they were in a historical korean drama or something like with the yeah. hanbok and the you know mm -hmm. the, the paint the red paint circular paint on the cheeks of the of the bride and um the rustic scene like that they established in a park um and then the glamour of the modern wedding which was just unrivaled um you also if you do get go to a modern wedding and probably a traditional one too. Remember to bring money. You're supposed to bring, at the time, at least uh, 50,000 won. It's probably gone up by now uh, since inflation and everything. But that was just the standard amount that you you would you need to bring money to the wedding to help offset the cost if you're a guest and everything like that. So instead of having a registry with gifts, you bring cash. <laughs> so uh, that was fun. And then the last, I think the last memory I really enjoyed was being able to uh, just travel with my girlfriend and her family. They accepted me uh, completely, even though I was like in their eyes, like a for you know, foreigner, <laughs> I would say ex expat in my eyes, uh, mm -hmm. being able to go to a resort with them in Gangwon Do and never once having to deal with awkward questions, just, you know, experiencing Korean food, um, and and scenery together and taking pictures and um, it's just something that I was just so appreciative of like because I think in a lot of situations they would wouldn't be so sure because they most of them <laughs> have never been to America and they don't you know it's just a hard thing to accept in certain cultures uh, you know Korea is quite you know culturally like you know mostly 90% just Korean there's not a, a lot of internationals there compared to the USA but they were so accepting and so so welcoming that um, I'll always remember being able to meet them, you know, and at the flea market and Dongdae Moon or or going mm -hmm. on trips to Gangwon Do. And I just think we really, when we meet people, we have to have an open mind and not assume that they're going to be adversarial or 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 whatever. Just like giving everyone a blank slate and letting them just see what they're all about. So I think those are the ones that 
well, all, was kind of in, in my mind during that year. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's your turn. Tina, okay. what, what, what's some of your favorite memories? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, so because I did share my the teaching experiences in our last episode and different memories throughout the year, I do have one more that I wanted to share that happened closer to the end of the year before leaving Korea. And basically, um, for me, the travel experiences and teaching really rekindled my love for writing. So I was inspired to write more about my experiences. And even before uh, leaving to Korea, I applied to write for this travel magazine, Verge magazine, where I got to blog about my experiences. Um, so then I you know, wrote like 10 articles about my experiences in Korea, which I also linked to these episodes. Um, and during this, uh, the end of the year, I joined this writer's group. So it's Dejan's writer's group. And what was so great about it, it was at the time I joined, the group was about to publish an anthology. So all I had to do was write a poetry piece and submit the piece and it got published. <laughs> so it was awesome. Um, and I basically wrote like a poetry piece. It's called Now and the Unknown. And it's basically about like my experiences after graduating from university um, and making a decision to step outside of your comfort zone and be courageous and, and do what we have done while we're in Korea. And um, so I wrote that and then we had a book launch event where there was an open mic performance. And um, for the book launch event, I was happy to attend. And like they had, I don't know how many books they sold, but the proceeds went to the animal shelter, uh, which was so nice. I was like, this is amazing. You know, I'm so happy uh, to do this. And, like I've always loved to write ever since I was young and I wanted to get published. So I was like, very happy from just that alone. Um, but there's something in me that I felt like, you know what, I kind of want to perform this piece too. So then um, the day of the book launch, I um, basically performed the poetry piece and I had a few people like my neighbors and a couple of friends there. And one of my friends also recorded it. Um, but basically, I, I was so nervous when I was up there performing. But then um, at the very end, one my performance, when I sat down, I actually had two um, Korean women that I didn't know uh, come up to me and ask me, like, they were like, oh, wow, like, uh, we really like your piece, like, what inspired you to write it? And then I was so happy hearing that, too. And I guess kind of told them, yeah, like, this is a little bit about, like, solo travel, too, and just meeting new people and new experiences, that sort of thing. Um, and then a friend that recorded the video, I watched it afterwards and I realized like, okay, like I was so nervous, but I didn't look as nervous as I felt. So that was good too. And I still have that video. Uh, I still have that book too. And I was so proud that I even like brought the book to school and just kind of tell my students about, oh, like this is the book that I, uh, the poetry that I got published and, and I shared with them that and I basically like telling them that it is possible to accomplish your childhood dream. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, what a unique okay. experience. Um, and just having okay. kind of a, a tangible um, product, you know, your, your poetry piece and the publishing <laughs> and everything. Just that's amazing. And you even got to yeah. interact with Native Koreans in, in your form of expression. Um, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll, you'll, have yeah. to, you'll have to show me the poem again sometime. I'll, I'll, I'll want to read it for sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> I did actually have the piece. Well, yeah, I have a piece on my website. But yeah, basically, um, it's quite a couple pages. So, so yeah, I'll, yeah. Be, I'll, have I'll have to check it out. Yeah, after this, okay. I'll have to read it. For you, Wes, what was your last day or week at school in Korea? Like before you left, how was all that for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of going to base this off of being in Dejan, you know, because there was we had a like a week or two after after the semester to to travel or whatever, from what I can remember. Um, so I'll just go off of that because um, that's really kind of what we're focusing on mostly. Um, so I would say at the school it was very calm because it was. You know, no students were there really, and the winter camp was over. 
So it was calm at the school. I mostly was just kind of preparing for logistics of coming back to the U.S. at the time. Um, I, you know, had lunch with the teachers every day. It was pretty chill. But after uh, school, I, I had a lot of focus on getting, taking care of everything to leave. Like, um, I spent a lot of time cleaning my apartment, trying to get as much of my deposit back as possible, packing my things, um, just kind of getting ready in that respect. Um, I would say, like, emotionally, it was, um, it was surreal just because I felt like I had so many experiences that it was almost like, what's going to happen after this? What's life going to be like? You know, just I don't know. I didn't know what was next because I didn't have a yeah. job. prospect yet so there was a lot of unknown like um after grad school I had a, a plan to go to Korea and I you know I had a focus and then for this one I was coming back without as much of a tangible idea of what I would do at the time so that was tough um mm -hmm. I will say like it didn't really feel like a goodbye because there's no one around so for me really the talent show's conclusion felt like the goodbye for my experience with the students, because that was the last like day of the, of the academic year there. And I took some pictures with some of them and um, that was the last time I saw most of them. So it was kind of, it, I kind of wish like I knew what they were up to now after all these years, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just kind of there. I wouldn't even be able to recognize them, you know, cause they were all yeah, you know, middle thing. schoolers at the time. And uh -huh. yeah, so I don't know. It was, It was just kind of tough, um, but overall, I I was happy with how the year went. You know, I, mm -hmm. I expected it just being a teacher's assistant, but I ended up leading lessons for pretty much the whole academic year, and I led to a summer camp and a winter camp, which was really intense. Um, so I don't know. I was happy with what I accomplished with my limited training at the time. Um, But in Korea itself, it was really hard to, to leave because I had to say goodbye to my girlfriend. And that was yeah. the last time we could really see each other every weekend um, for the foreseeable future. Um, so hard. <laughs> I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, so, you know, it, it was kind of a little bit sad, but also I felt like I was so glad that I did this experience. I it was, Everything was so much fun. I just... I just knew that, um, and we'll get back to it later of, of our thoughts about why we left early or whatever. So we'll get into that later, but I'll just say that um, overall, it was bittersweet, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So overall, that's where I would be. How about for you? Um. Yeah, like for me, I was very, very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... So, you know, saying goodbye to my neighbors, too. Uh, I mentioned before how I had two expats in my building. And also I met, like, a group of other expats um, who weren't a part of the EPIC program, but were around my neighborhood. And then saying goodbye to you, <laughs> saying goodbye to, like, a few other expat friends and a uh, local teacher that I was got gotten close with that I didn't co-teach with. But it was in, who she was in the school, and then um, some of the staff, even like my main co teacher, and um, saying goodbye to basically like I, I was acting like like I would never return kind of thing, <laughs> like because I don't know if I would return, right? Like I, it's been six years and I still haven't returned yet, right? right so like right. it's one of the things that for me I was like treating it like it was like final. <laughs> um, so then I said goodbye to all the kids. Um, And then I got like candies for us, for kids too, like this big bag of like candy. And then um, I did take pictures with the kids too, like for classroom wise, like class photo. But it wasn't like I couldn't, I didn't do it with every class. I just did it for like third, third and fourth grade. Um, and then yeah, so I took pictures with them. I wrote a letter to my like a few of my pen pal kids that you know were able to understand my what I wrote. And then. Um, I did actually wanted to ask you about this too because I didn't really exchange contact info with the kids because for me, even though I know that the kids are very close with their like teachers, like the Korean teachers and in general and the culture there is very different. But I felt like I was I would be crossing a boundary if I 
exchange number. Not to say that I didn't do it for some kids, but I I felt like if I just kind of like wrote my number on the board, <laughs> like wrote my email, it was like I don't know how the teachers felt about that, so I didn't do that. My students were quite a bit older than yours, so I think it's it was just <laughs> different. Uh, but I didn't add too yeah. many. I just like maybe one or two on Facebook, you know, which felt pretty safe to, um, for both yeah, sides. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. So there's like mm -hmm. one or two, but yeah, a couple of years, you know, okay. just wishing happy birthday and you know that just basic stuff, but not uh, yeah, not many that's, of them overall. Nice. I think um, yeah, but I do. I will say like I don't know. I almost wish I found a way to do it that felt right you know like a way that, yeah. yeah i don't know maybe an email yeah. later, uh to share but yeah, uh because yeah, exactly. I, I am curious at this point what they're all up to and i think oh yeah i think they're all like university students by now because it's been oh, six yeah, years sure. so they were they'd be in like um i think yeah they'd be like juniors or freshmen i think it's university mm -hmm. but at this yeah, point yeah. If, or they'd be working so yeah i'm right. curious what some of them are up to i do I, you know since there's like a thousand of them you know, obviously, you're going to get to know, have some sort of um, connection with, like, you know, a handful of them. So I would say there's probably 20 at the most that I, like, kind of got to know fairly well over the year because mm -hmm. we just had that yeah. natural connection as teacher and student. And, um, you know, with middle schoolers, their English fluency is quite a bit higher than elementary. So you really get to kind of see their personality mm -hmm. and interests and um yeah, overall it's, it was fun. Yeah, it was a good, uh, yeah. good time. I really do. I really am curious about what they're doing. Yeah, that's yeah. the hardest part. Yeah, I just like what? I can't, where did they go to school? Like I, you know, I assume most of them probably stayed in Dijon and studied in, in universities okay. there. But yeah, and it would be yeah. so cool to you know meet one of them one of these days. But yeah, I mean it's almost impossible. Sure. Even all the teachers, you know, leave the school after five years. Exactly. So that school I mean yeah. Everyone, it's everyone's like, gone. <laughs> it's been sick. Everyone's you know. gone. By the time yeah. I return, everyone's gone. Um yeah. but anyway, yeah, I was curious about that because I knew that I had a few friends that worked in Hagwon and because Hagwon teachers they um they basically taught on their own. They didn't have like a co teacher um in the classroom with them um i knew a few of them just like put the email on the board <laughs> and even like you said it was the kids were so young that it's i did have like the little ones a few of them come up to me to exchange numbers which i did like a cacao talk right but it's like we didn't really message each other so it was kind of hard um and then i also had this one student she was in uh, fifth grade and she her English level was really good um she wrote a note and she was like oh Tina teacher you're my favorite teacher and then it was really sweet and she put a phone number right and then I was like okay I'm gonna add her <laughs> I couldn't add her for some reason the last digit was like um not clear oh. and then I'm like okay maybe I'll try calling maybe I'll try like you know figuring out what the last digit was and everything but then I just couldn't reach her like this number I don't know about the number was just not I don't know who what number it is. So basically, I never ended up like staying in touch uh, with her, which was kind of yeah. sad. I told you about how I taught after school high school girls, right? So I do have like two of them on Instagram and one that I actually really kept in touch with um, for the years. So otherwise, like it's hard when with the kids, yeah. um, which is unfortunate. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did any of like your family or friends came to visit throughout the year, or were they able to come? Yeah, I don't know if we covered this in an earlier one or not, um, but my <laughs> great aunt did visit um, Korea with, oh. with her daughter. Um, so, oh, nice. yeah, she was there for a few few days. And, um, yeah, my girlfriend's family was so accommodating. They had them have a dinner at their home and home-cooked mm -hmm. meal and drove them around. And, yeah, it was – I was just – I haven't – yeah, my girlfriend's family is amazing. Like, they're just so – the hospitality, the interest in other cultures, it was just beyond anything I could have imagined. So I, I, I'm really grateful for that. Um, they just had a wonderful time in Korea. They said it was their favorite place by far that they've ever traveled. <laughs> and they travel quite, the quite around the world. <laughs> yeah, it's the people yeah, too. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they had was, a great experience. <laughs> oh, they, they really did. And it was all thanks to, um, 
yeah, I mean, the culture of Korea itself, but also my, my girlfriend and her family being so accommodating um, to them. So, yeah, that was a real precious memory. I know your family visited as well, right? Oh, yes, yes. That was what I was getting at. Because, like, I remember throughout the year, a lot of, uh, like, I've seen a lot of the other expats, like, their family came to visit or friends, whatever. And I was a little envious and I was, like, homesick a little bit, too. Uh, but I was actually very fortunate to have, throughout the year, I had um, a group of, like, my university friends came to visit. So I got to explore Seoul with them for a bit or just travel with them for a bit. And then I also had, like, one elementary school friend who came to visit too um and i got to see her for a little bit and my sister's friends at the very very end though like my family came to visit me which was really nice we actually crashed my school at the very first day of the new school year <laughs> so then oh, i was seriously? just like showing them around yeah <laughs> so i was showing them around dejon and so we all knew had so much time and i was like oh come and i want to show you the city that i lived in and also um, school, my school and then we walked in and went inside and then um, I went to like upstairs to see if I can see some of my students and then in one of my favorite classroom classes um, fourth grade class and then I just, I just peeked in like through the window you know to see and then some of the kids saw me they're like Tina teacher so then I actually interrupted the class <laughs> the kids um, they all like ran out <laughs> <laughs> while the teacher was like teaching midway and I was like oh man they ran out to like greet me and they're like oh you're still here and I'm like yeah that's what I say like show my family um like the school and then so they came out they were hugging me and I was like, just, like so emotional like it was just like the best like final memory oh, to see the kids and awesome. um yeah we took more pictures <laughs> and videos a uh, very heartwarming farewell but anyways um so like my family they had a really a, a blast uh, exploring Korea. Um, I took some shopping, went to the Jim Japan, <laughs> uh, the Yusan Foot Spa, palaces, cafes, everything. I was like the tour guide. Not the best, nice. but like I showed them around and they had a great time. <laughs> That's awesome. So I have a pretty serious question, I would say, deep question for you. And that is yeah. why did you decide to leave Korea and did you ever wish you stayed longer? Those are, those are some good questions. Um, like, honestly, I am the type of person that wants to be good at what I'm doing in, in, in general. Um, and when I went to Korea, I thought I'd be a teacher's assistant, and I felt ready for that. But they wanted me to be, a, like, a, a legit teacher, like, leading the lessons in the curriculum. And... Knowing how important English is to a Korean's future, um, I just couldn't continue with it without knowing how to actually teach at that you know the level of responsibility. Um, I made it through a year. I had an but I had an amazing um, amount. Of, you know, I had three amazing co teachers. I guess four, and you know that's not something that I could sort of rely on every year teaching in, in Korea. I didn't know what was expected of me completely. So I wanted to come back to the U.S. and really think about if I wanted to really be a teacher or not as a career. And, and if so, get trained in that. So I I decided that I wanted to go back. And, and, um, and then later I decided, yeah, I do want to do it again. <laughs> And it kind of mm -hmm. was like during our podcast, we were talking about it. I don't know. Yeah. I might have been related a bit to last episode. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But like I started um, learning, a, I started my master's of science and education, in English language learning when we, around when we started this, uh, this podcast. So I think um, it took a couple of years to, to figure it out, but I, I, I think I did want to come back and, and do that again in the future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think just, and I'm almost done with that program. We'll get into that later. But I do think a big part of why I left was I didn't want to just be a teacher that skated by, that did the minimum to keep, you know, his job. <laughs> I wanted to be a good teacher if I was going to be a teacher. And I, I didn't have the education or the training to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's what, that was the main reason. I just felt like for a year, yeah, I can, 
But if I want to stay here longer, I really need to know what I'm doing more. So that was part of it. Uh, also, I'm an only child. And uh, my parents, you know, are getting, getting a little older. And I felt like um, they were in a place where they needed me to be home to help mm -hmm. out. So that was another part of it. Um, and then, uh, and I, yeah, I think that was the main thing. And then, and then the third thing was um, I wanted to actually try out my career because I just okay. finished my Master's of Ed before I went to Korea. So I never actually worked in the, as like a um, coordinator at a, in a higher education institute. And I wanted to see what that was like um, before I made my decision. So, um, yeah, so I think that was just a combination of things. Um, would I have wanted to stay one more year? It really depends. Like, most of my co-teachers were leaving as well. I didn't want to go through, like, having a two or three new co-teachers. I feel like if the, all my co-teachers were staying an extra year, mm -hmm. I that would have swayed me as well. Like, I might have stayed another year. I think overall, I think it would have been nice to stay another year to have more cultural experiences and immersion and maybe focus more on learning Korean but in the end it all it all did work out um, I think for the better but yeah I, I would have been nice to have a little bit more time <laughs> <laughs> how about for you what is what yeah, did you like, leave and did you want to uh, stay longer yeah yeah I remember um like closer to the end or even like throughout yeah, like closer to the end, basically, like we had this conversation, right? And so long ago, but like we didn't talk about like, you know, I think our time is up. <laughs> um, and my reason for leaving, I guess I had several. And it for me, it's kind of like, in the beginning, I kind of knew that I was only going to stay for a year uh, because I had like my sister's wedding to attend, um, coming back. And I guess I also had you know, an idea what I wanted to do after with my career and everything. Like, I kind of, I basically felt like, okay, I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, like, I, I, even if I wasn't really sure, I was like, you know, coming back and starting fresh, I basically felt like I didn't have to worry about that, which was great because my mindset back then was like, you know, you, you'll figure it out. You'll be fine. Um, and, um, but basically I did miss my family and friends and I think, it, for me, it felt like it was the right time too. Like I felt like one year was enough. Like sure, I could stay longer um, and everything, but I did feel like I did everything I wanted to do when I left Happy, and that was very important for me. Because um, in the beginning, even I was like in a honeymoon phase, and I'm like, okay, I'm staying longer. I'm staying for another year. And afterwards, like I'm like I could stay longer, but I, I just felt like, for me, I felt like it was, it was. I'm good, you know, and then so like, even though like my journey in Korea has ended and everything, um, I feel like my desire to live abroad hasn't and it's been like six years later. Um, and I'm going to go more into this later. But basically, I felt like, yeah, like, afterwards, I did really consider like living somewhere else for maybe a year or somewhere else. And because um, in your 20s, you're, you're young and you just want to live your life and you just want to explore things, right? Um, and then I was like, okay, I really enjoyed visiting Japan. I think I would love Japan. Um, and then, so yeah, I'll go more into that later. <laughs> but oh, so I guess like that I wish I stayed longer. Not really. I can't say that I regretted that decision or anything, but maybe I do like have that like, oh, it would have been so nice if I lived somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's great. Yeah. But I think I also want to add, like, I think for me was that, like, if I wanted to continue pursuing teaching, I think that it would be great to, like, your reasons are very valid. And if I think that for me, I was like, okay, maybe I would do, like, another year uh, for teaching. But because I'm like, I don't, I want, well, I really enjoy teaching. I don't think that was something that I wanted to pursue. So that's why I didn't, um, it's the whole broad thing, it's a little harder if it's like, how else am I going to live abroad? Like, of course, there's so many ways that you can live abroad and like, and, you know, get a job and everything. But for me, I was like, okay, like, teaching English would be the best option to go to Japan, right? right. But I didn't want to necessarily do that again. So yeah, okay. <laughs> that's basically... Yeah. 
those are all real valid reasons as well. Uh, I'm glad you yeah. had that experience at the end of the day instead of mm -hmm. extending it, but then wanting to go back halfway through your second year or whatever. That would have been rough. Mm -hmm. that didn't right, happen, right. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now on to life after Korea. Uh, what happened when you first returned home? Uh, did you experience reverse culture shock and post travel blues and how did you handle all of that yeah right um well i just was so glad to be able to see my my dogs and, and my family and my friends when i first got back um i think i try to be more positive um as much as i can so that initial feeling i guess was the excitement of um being able to see them all again and have a lot of family time i guess uh because i didn't um yeah i didn't have a job at that point um uh, it was a march when i came back um uh, so just really just kind of trying to kind of reflect on what happened and focus on trying to catch up with family and friends that i didn't see for the past year was definitely a focus um uh, I did get reverse culture shock and some social interactions. I think I've said this earlier in the series, but people always saying my name multiple times. Um, I just, yeah. and, and, and like we, I mean, and like, this is 30 minutes in the conversation or, or whatever, or I've been there for a couple hours and they're still saying my name all the time, not even to get my attention. Just, you know, I don't know. It was just, it was bizarre. Like I just felt, like when I was in Korea, I didn't hear my name that much. Uh, <laughs> so to Wait, hear my people name, call you West teacher or? Well, I mean, I mean, students said West teacher in passing, mm -hmm. but I mean, in the midst of interacting with oh, right. with my friends, especially, you know, we've been together, hanging out most of the day, and I'm still hearing my name all the time, and it's like, <laughs> why? are you still saying my name? I, that was just something that I never realized before how important names are um, in, in America or in Western culture. And I think it's still impacted me. Like I don't say names as often as probably I used to because um, it's just not, you know, I, I think we're such an individualistic culture, uh, but I try to associate things more with the group and the community now than I think I ever did. So I think like I have a more group focused mindset and community mindset than like after being in Korea for a year, I think it really impacted me in, in that mm -hmm. respect, I'm less, okay. less individualistic. Um, so that was a thing. And then obviously I really took for granted in Korea, how amazing the food is there and how hard it is to get in my small town um, because man, eating Korean food every day was just such a great, or, or Japanese food or, you know, mostly East Asian food, just having that access and for how cheap it was. I mean, I really, um, was so, for, so, um, lucky. And then coming back, just not being able to have that very much. It was, uh -huh. was a lot, it was, it was disappointing. So I think sometimes I really miss, um, you know, Korean food overall being affordable and accessible. Um, yes. So, so when I go to, when I went to Korea later, I like, I really didn't want to mess with any international food. I wanted Korean food. Like <laughs> it was legit. I want Korean yeah. food. I love Korean food. Um, and yeah, that was, that was a big thing there. Um, let's see. What else do I have done here? Um, yeah. I mean, meeting up with my friends, I think being apart for a year made us realize like how much, you know, we enjoyed being together, how much we missed each other. So <laughs> I hung out with my friends a lot that first yeah. year back, especially. Yeah. How was it like um, your friendships and, and relationships with everyone after you came back? Well, I was lucky. I'm lucky in that my birthday is March 16th, actually. So. Um, oh, it's soon. <laughs> yeah, it's soon. <laughs> okay. So I got back and then my birthday was like a week or two later. So I just hosted like a birthday party in my town. And that was like a, like a great way to kind of rekindle those friendships. Wow. And um, okay. yeah, it was nice to have like an actual event be the kickstart for that. Right. Um, so yeah, I didn't feel like I missed a beat um, overall. So and for several years up until COVID, we, we, were, we would see each other 
fairly often. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's like, you know, once in a while, <laughs> but, but um, after COVID, but yeah, that really was a great, um, I really felt supported by my friends and family upon my return, which helped reduce the post-travel blues. But I did miss Korea a lot, so I ended up going back for a trip that winter. <laughs> so oh, that was I was literally like, the same really? year I went oh, back. Oh, good for you, though. I mean, also your girlfriend is there, too, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, like, have reasons to go back. Not to say I don't have reasons to go back, but it's, like, not as much reasons as you, I would say. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> yeah. But how about for you? Like, how was your, uh, when you went back to Canada, what was your, how, were, how oh. did you feel? And Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, again, I'm pretty sure we talked about this, like, you know, off the pod. Um, right, right. And uh, so I actually didn't return to Korea right away after our contract, after my family came to visit. Um, I traveled to China and Hong Kong for the first time. So uh, where my mother and father were born. So I got to see um, the village that my mom grew up in and, and where my dad lived as well. So it was great to do that for like a whole month, before, like traveling a bit, a little bit before returning home. And um, it was great too, because in Hong Kong, when I was in Hong Kong, I was able to meet up with a friend who at the time she was teaching in Hong Kong and she was a friend met in university. So it's always so nice to meet people like halfway across the world. Like even though I can see you in Toronto, but it's like a whole different like environment and vibe when you meet them. So I think I mentioned in one of my previous episodes that I traveled to Singapore and I met up met someone on the streets of Singapore. Um, and basically she's from Hong Kong and um yeah, so like I we exchanged numbers and I was gonna meet up with her in Hong Kong. Unfortunately, the timing didn't work out. Like I had all these family plans, so we couldn't meet up. But then later on, when she came to visit in Toronto, uh, we did end up meeting. Uh, timing worked this time, so it was like it's it's amazing when you meet someone random, <laughs> and then like eventually we did meet up when she came to my country. So that was nice. Um, but basically, when I did return home i did experience a huge reverse culture shock and post-travel blues which is why this is like the big topic of the day too yeah even returning home i was so used to bowing to everyone in korea that i was bowing when i was back home too like you too right <laughs> did you uh, do that yeah too? i would do well a little mini bow and i still yeah, think once in a while i'll still do, like the little yeah. Many bow, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I watch a lot of K dramas too, out? so that doesn't. Oh. Well, I do it with the students that are Korean uh, on, a, on a kind of subconsciously. Oh, and then I give things <laughs> with. Two, sometimes I'll give things with two hands. Oh really? <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Especially when I first got back, yeah, it was like, oh here oh, you go. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so respectful. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was one thing, but it was so funny because for me, yes, I did miss Korean food, but. I think returning home, I miss Western food so much um, that I went to the grocery store. I don't know. Do you guys have no frills? <laughs> no frills. No. Not my No, area. okay. I was just, like, so happy just going to the grocery to get groceries. And then yeah. I was just like, yeah, I, I was like more excited than I needed to be. But <laughs> anyways, because um, like even in Korea, like it was, you know, all Asian Korean food. And then I did have a friend who had a Costco membership in oh, Beijing. Oh, nice. So I did get to go once in a while and I don't have Costco membership. So I was so excited when I like go with her sometimes. Yeah. Um, but then otherwise I did miss like, like Western food. So I was like happy to be home just to, not just Western, but like international, like more international cuisines. Uh, but of course, I like if, in my area. I can get Korean food anytime, even though, of course, it's it's so different and and it's not as affordable as it is in Korea. Um, it was so nice that when I returned home, I had like my closest friends throw like a uh, they threw a surprise birthday birthday <laughs> surprise dinner um, to welcome me home, and um, it, it was it was so nice. But at the same time. I don't know if you also experienced this where when everyone's like asking you like, oh, how was your experience in Korea and everything? I actually didn't know how to respond. Like I 
they're like, how was it? And I was like, it was good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I didn't really know how to, what to say because I'm like, so much has happened. Where do I even begin? Um, right. And I, I guess I try to like tell them about it, but I also don't want to be like talking for like, like two hours. <laughs> I think aside from my articles and this podcast, I have not went into so much detail unless someone asked me about it. Like I didn't go into as much detail. Right. In general. Yeah. I think overall, when I've ever talked about it, people seem fairly interested in the topic. So I would yeah. I would mm-hmm. mention it when there was time, like at the office or with with friends. Yeah, yeah I would I think they people are really interested in it, honestly. So I would I would try mm-hmm. not to ramble on and on. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I do think it was it was a nice thing to talk about when maybe there wasn't as much to talk about at the time. Like Mm-hmm, they might share some mm-hmm. of their tra- story travels as well. So I think overall, right. it was, I just, you know, yeah, I, I think feel like so many experiences yeah. condensed into one year. You know, it's, it's just amazing how yeah, much happened yeah. it's hard to, like, to everyday it. life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It's like, that is like, yeah. Okay. We'll talk about it um, more later. But yeah, yeah. Like, uh, no, well, generally, they have, it's very positive, like, you know, everyone's very interested, they're very inspired. I'm sure for you too, like everyone's like very inspired by our travels and everything. Um, what really helped me like deal with that missing Korea was um at my university there were exchange students from Korea. So I would just I would have opportunities uh, to meet them at like the Korean nice. church or when I later when I got job there and I think that helped me cope with oh, the blues because so I yeah, yeah. I still had and I could talk about being in Korea with them and I could learn you know have that culture exchange yeah, yeah. yeah so I think I was fortunate that enough. Under- yeah that's nice yeah. like that understanding but also that yeah like um exchange that's like a connection that you guys have. That's, that's yeah. Like, oh yeah. Um, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> I I I can even tell you that I don't even have. I can't even name one Korean friend. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, back to the post travel blues. Um, basically for me, the first three months, I have to admit it was very heartbreaking for me. Um, I felt like I was grieving a lot. I was very sad. I cried a lot. Like that's how much it hit me when I came home. Aww. I was like, felt like. Like, I, like a yeah, heartbroken kind of thing. Um, and then for me, I don't really know how I really coped with it, to be honest, because I felt like it did, like, I was quite sad for quite some time. Um, and, like, but I think it was just talking about it. Like, i pretty sure I talked to you about it. I talked to a few, a few other of my expat friends and then just for us to, like, share, like, yeah, how much we miss it. Um, it was nice just, like, talk about it um I even reached out to a few other people like one person that was in our well not she's not in our program but she was like someone that we met that lived there for like four years in Korea and she actually returned and she was also from Toronto so I asked her I can't reach out to her I'm like oh how are you doing and she was like oh I'm doing fine which actually didn't I was surprised from her answer because I felt like oh okay like it's just is, am I the only one who's experiencing this? Um, but I think it's like, it's kind of different because for her, she was there for so long that she could really say that she did everything there, right? And then she's probably like, right, I'm ready to be home now. But for me, I was like, it was just a year. Like, it was long enough, but also like, I, you know, I, I guess you could say it could be longer too. But I think it was, yeah, and I guess I want to experience things differently or was as well so I react to things differently too so for me it was really hit me um at the time um and also reach out to someone else who was like yeah um in a program that was like I will travel until I cannot anymore you know many people stayed longer as we know in a program there are people that left but there's people that stayed for like two years when I went to Korea I met my neighbors and other people that stayed for like two three years or longer and I've always admired that. Um, but then, you know, I knew that, like, the decision I made at that time to come back, it felt right for me. But it was just, like, I was experiencing all these feelings and emotions and all of that. And and then, again, it's also, like, I was grieving over, like, you know, the life that I had. It was so different uh, in right. Korea. Um, who I was at the time, too. And um, the students that I felt like I'd never see again. <laughs> And like all these things, right? So then I was like, 
so sad. And also, even coming back, even coming back, it was kind of essentially like starting over again too. Yeah, you know. So that was all the feelings that I had. Um, yeah, that was all the feelings that I had. But I think at the end of the day, just like how I handled it was just giving myself time and like embracing my emotions that sit yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I I feel like you sort of were one to kind of take on the reality of things and really just accept the sadness of it not being the same which is commendable mm-hmm. i think for me i just replaced that hole with what was available to me like getting more okay. into korean dramas korean pop than okay. ever before um meeting korean yeah, exchange yeah. students oh, going yeah. to the korean church you know until covid helped oh, me yeah, yeah. feel like nothing was missing as That's much true. So I just sort of tried Wait, to replenish like, that, yeah. yeah. Instead of just saying it's oh, it's gone and 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 cold uh, turkey, <laughs> <laughs> cold turkey. Yeah, I didn't go cold turkey. I studied Korean language more when I first got back oh, as okay. well. Yeah, because I wanted oh, to have a, a firmer, be- rudimentary understanding of the language. And oh, yeah, I, I would say my I'm listening now. My listening is my strongest skill. Like when I know when they're okay. talking about me, <laughs> so it's just helpful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then when they're students, you know. Uh, but but yeah, I I went through uh, a lot. I think I would have had a lot more negative emotions if I didn't like go and do that. To, yeah, do that. And even go back that first year, I had to because it was just like mm. I couldn't go cold turkey. It was too much. So. <laughs> I am lucky to be like there. A actual <laughs> breakup from you. It really would have. That's not, I, I, I really that. met Koreans every single semester since coming back from Korea, except for COVID, which was. You no, know, I should have done that too. Yeah. <laughs> I should have like go to some uh, Toronto Korean language exchange meetup. Oh. Or oh no, I, I should have. Yeah, like, should, it would have yeah, been a good yeah, yeah, help. Like, yeah, because yeah, the big because, enough city. Yeah. Yeah. And there's or, like, a... go to Korean town, because we have, like, two Korean towns here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can go anytime, and um, just saying, you know, you've been to Korea for a year really opens them, opens up um, other uh-huh. Korean stuff. But, oh, you've lived in my country, you know my culture, you like you like my culture, and that opens a lot of doors. But, like, I don't know, like, everyone's different in how they process things, um, I think. Yeah, just for me, yeah. I, just, I just felt like it's not over, because... Korean culture is far reaching than you'd expect. Not so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, even, um, yeah, like that's why I felt like because I don't have anyone to even practice with too, I, I barely remember much Korean. But like for you, you've been like learning, keeping up with that. Yeah. Especially like when I first got back, like mm-hmm. I really, I wanted that beginner Korean. I went through the first level of talk to me Korean series. I learned, you know, I learned some Korean and I, and I still pick, pick up on vocab and stuff once in a while. I actually have a new goal about Korean after I finish um, my master's degree. I might, we might talk about that later, but, okay. but, um, but yeah, I, I do think um, that helps me not miss it as much as I'm still very focused on Korean K-pop okay. news I meet That's Koreans good. every semester, so I do think if I didn't have that, I would <laughs> it would be really hard for me. So, man, I, 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 I think I'm, I, I'm sensitive in a way too. Like I, yeah, I didn't, didn't want to feel that emptiness, so I had to find it around mm-hmm. me. So that's what good I did. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's good too. Yeah, and I think um, also something I wanted to mention before our next question was. Um, like other struggles that I felt like I experienced too, because, um, and this is, this is really tough too, but um, it could, because it's like, yes, at that time, like I was very sad. So, you know, all these emotions and everything. But um, I think even fair to say that it's been like six years and then um, like throughout the years, I've always kind of like mentioned like how I really have that desire to live abroad again. Um, but there's, but especially in the very beginning when I came back, it's like I just came back. And then, of course, um, there are, you know, many people who are very inspired by my travels. Um, but at the same time, there were people that, you know, of course, not everyone's going to be, like, supportive of that decision, right? right. And then there's a right. lot of noise around me. And, of course, there. I think at that time I was more upset because I did take it maybe a bit more personal. Uh, like, it kind of, like, 
you know, I was like in my emotional. So it's kind of like when someone was was saying, like, oh, you should stay here and like, you know, commit to a job or a person or something. And I was like offended <laughs> in a sense. But then now sure. I'm like more like, okay, I can see where you're coming from, you know, like more clear minded mind about you know their perspective but of course it's funny because the people who have told me that were also people who didn't like to travel at the time yeah. um, but even then it's like you know there's, there's gonna be like people that are close to you that aren't very supportive of you know those kind of decisions mm-hmm. but at the, at the end of the day it is up to like what you want to do with your life and and everything so so yeah i guess gotta i guess i wanted to bring that up yeah that's a good point like yeah Honestly, while it's, it's nice awesome. to hear, it's nice to hear other perspectives, for, for sure. Yeah, but it is. It's, it's true. It, but at the end of the it. day, we know ourselves the best because we mm-hmm. have more time, the most time with ourselves, right? Because we are ourselves. Yeah. So others only see yeah. us like if they see us like an hour a month or an hour a week. Is that really enough time for them to really know what's best for us? I don't think so. Um, I don't think they have enough yeah. um, time. Now, your best friends that are with you, you know, for years and, and fairly regularly, they might, I would take their words with more of a more seriousness. But if it's acquaintances, I'm really not going to give it much thought because they just don't have enough time time with me to really know what motivates me and what I need so you know it, it's nice in some ways but it's also like yeah they did it. you know I'm not I'm not gonna give the same advice to them either like if it's not someone I know that well I'm not gonna yeah, try to, yeah. I'm not gonna try to discourage them I think it's better to support people because they probably know what they're doing <laughs> just because they yeah. know themselves True. um you know so I don't know but that's a good thing I, honestly like I think we got to be able, willing to trust people and not assume things just, you know, for sure. Yeah. 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 I guess I wanted to bring that up because I feel like um, for any of our listeners or if they were to do something like this, you know, to teach abroad, live abroad, this is something that they might experience coming yeah. back to because um, yeah, it, it's so different for everyone. I'm pretty sure too for for some of us making that decision to to even go live abroad in the first place. You might have some people that support you, and it might have some people that have don't really support that decision too, right? So there's yeah. that too. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's just the way it is. But you know, we only there's not many opportunities to have this sort of experience uh, because it's so easy to get bogged down with career development family things you know that if this opportunity presents itself i really encourage people to go for it because <laughs> honestly you know we're at almost you know, what we did this in 2016 right so we're almost yeah. seven years yeah. right later um we're, we're nearing that six and a half fight yeah. wait no yeah. seven years it's, almost it's like- Six, seven years, yes. Yeah, yeah. And we still are talking about it. We still think about it. Um, I know it's different for everyone else, but, like, just from my perspective, I you got to take that opportunity um, to just – you'll grow so much. Um, yeah. And it will, it, it will change you. Um, you're, the way I, you view the world, yeah, my, my perspective has forever changed. Um, and I feel like I just have a more open mind than before and and um yeah i just i'm just really glad that i did it so yeah, overall don't let the naysayers get in your way of having um unforgettable experiences like you gotta go for it you'll yeah. work in your career your whole life and it'll be you'll monotonous your life out like you know yeah. i think a lot of people some people told me that they're worried about like the career and everything um yeah that's like Maybe a, a reason that was holding them back from doing something like this. Sure, like, sure. Like, figure it out. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. yeah. Honestly, <laughs> the, this could be something that could change your what you want to do in your career. Yeah. Like, like for <laughs> yeah. me, I know after this teaching experience, I'm like, you know what? I want to teach eventually. I don't know when exactly, That's but I'm going to get the edu- yeah. education now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be set up to do that again later. And I would have never thought of that without of this experience because my major was not in it was not in teaching at the time so uh-huh, um, right. but my dad was a teacher and 
Oh. It's something you can try out too. If you're interested in teaching at all, this is a great way to know if you have Yeah, that. that's true. So, um, yeah, so you'd yeah. be surprised. I think uh, a number of people after this experience, they decided to pursue teaching. Oh yeah. It's very, it's, it's yeah. challenging, but it's, I just love the creativity that it allows when it comes to lesson planning. My gosh, there's, I mean, there's limitations, but there's also a lot of creative freedom that's not afforded in many industries, you know? So yeah. I just think, I think it's a great thing to pursue. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> On to our next question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we're pretty much almost done, but um, yeah. I wanted to like, I guess briefly, you can fill us in. What's life like been in the last six years or so? Six years. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be brief for this one. <laughs> um, overall, I, you know, I went back to my hometown. Um, I searched for work, uh, but I ended up getting a job at my alma mater in my hometown, and I um, worked in that one position for about four nearly five years and then I transferred wow. like a year ago uh, to from that from it was like a health uh, wellness department and I transferred to the International Student Services office um, and I just had a year working there and it's been it's been really great um, it's busier but it's also stuff that I'm interested in and want to do so I've been I'm I basically do the orientations for incoming undergraduate international students and I provide ongoing support for exchange students and sponsored students so that's, that's amazing it sounds yeah it, it sounds like something you would do or something you would enjoy doing especially when it's like international students and it's yeah, like a little yeah. bit like you said the culture aspect yeah the culture aspect um I oversee and I also advise international student organization would they have um a big event every semester so i help make those happen like a food show international food show or international culture night it's like a talent show um and i do a lot of the behind the scenes administrative work which isn't as fun but it's a necessary part of of the process and you know it's work you know you get paid for it so it's fine but mm -hmm. overall it's just kind of an area where i want to be and then and then i'm wrapping up my um, master's of science in education and english language learning this um mm -hmm. may so I started yeah. this major in May, spring 2020, right before COVID, and now I'm finishing it this May. I'm working on my capstone right now, <laughs> and um, yeah, I've just had a wonderful experience. Um, I received, you know, scholarships and wow. um, different commendations. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've um, and then it's a free benefit for those that work at my um, institution education institution so tuition is covered fees are covered so it's been a great benefit um i've literally um learned so much about um what ELL learners struggle with um as they develop their english proficiency and why it helped me understand why miscommunications could happen more often between native speakers and um, english language learners and this has been really helpful because it helped me kind of give international students uh, kind of a mulligan or a benefit of the doubt when they it seem like they're being rude or or whatever um sometimes it might be they don't know how to say something the you know the the polite way or they mm -hmm. have a cultural misunderstanding so I, it gave me more patience and understanding um which i didn't intend to learn through that major but uh yeah it's really cool um that degree would allow me to um yeah just have a much better foundation and, and certification for teaching English um, in the U.S. or, or abroad. So um, specifically to international students or English mm -hmm. foreign language learners. Um, so, yeah, that's basically everything as, as quick as I could sum it up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good quick summary. <laughs> well, uh, definitely want to hear more about it. Yeah, how about for you? What's been going on? <laughs> I'm like trying to keep it short too. <laughs> because it's like six years of real life, what happened? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, okay. For me, I, I like I'm sure like you you did a lot. I did a lot too. And just thinking like what's like the main point here? <laughs> main points. Because I really um 
I guess for me, even coming back, I was still, you know, exploring a lot in terms of my career too. And um, and I also traveled a lot too, even though I didn't travel back to Korea since I left. Um, although I, every, I, for the longest time, like every day I was thinking about Korea, I wanted to go back, but I didn't feel like I wanted to go back like right away. I can't believe I waited this long, but, but I did. Um, but anyways, I basically decided at the end of the day, decided to stay in Toronto. But I did try to travel as much as I could. Um, uh, basically, actually, when I came back, I actually was looking for work. So I did do part time teaching. Um, so it, that year experience, it did help me land. Um, I did like a summer um, teaching for international students. So that was nice. I did for for more high school teaching, but it was also had like, um, I had a fill in for like younger, younger kids too. So I did like ESL, ESL for summer camp. And I also did a part time teaching for um, adults, ESL, which was so nice, because like, actually, that experience, like, um, I was hired it was actually interesting because I was hired from a passion, actually, uh, which was really interesting because I didn't have like a like an education degree or studies or anything. It was just like also like my teaching. It was just my teaching experience, and then I was like very passionate. And um, they said that like I also had to do homework for that um, interview process, which was like create like a course outline and anything. So I did that. And then it was like, cause the adults were ESL adults and um, like they were like, like moms and, and like a, a lot older too. And um, they had a trial with me too. Like the first class, they sat in my class and they could decide if they wanted to continue with me or like leave, right? So like I, it was like a small group, but like only really one person decided not to continue with me. And everyone else was like, believed in me enough to like, continue with me which is so nice so anyways I did create like a eight weeks uh course with them for the part-time position where I got to teach them like ESL English and which was was a really great experience so I'm really glad that um the teaching whole teaching career experience led to that um but ultimately I did not continue to pursue with teaching and I think it's just like it's not well I like I mentioned how it was like there's so many great things about teaching I think I didn't want to pursue like actual like teachers uh, education for me especially in Toronto I don't feel like the teachers are paid what they're worth <laughs> like we always they always have like strikes and stuff here and it's just I, I it, it is a lot of work but I I really admire teachers so much more now having that experience I admire you Wes <laughs> for pursuing you know that and um and everyone else who who is a teacher now um so basically i um it, it's a kind of long story but i i um basically am working in governments um that's my full-time job when i came back i landed a position in government and um but throughout the years i have done a lot on the side i have um did a lot of like freelance writing, content uh, marketing, and even copywriting. Um, but like even before that, I did a lot of like continue to write a lot to build my portfolio. Um, and then and that's when I applied to like different positions or networked my way into like different like freelance part time positions in writing and and more creative positions. Um, but even before then, how I mentioned that it was very hard for me coming back I was also seeking ways to get paid to travel so like I really wanted to do something again like it doesn't have to be like a whole year it was just like I wanted to look for different ways to travel and I did travel a lot actually like in the first year I came back I traveled like four times <laughs> in a year like a family with like friends like different types of travels that um yeah like it, it was it was even while while working my my job right and then um so i actually applied to work on a cruise ship <laughs> and i was very close to doing it uh lily had the contract in my face but i didn't go with through with it uh, i would say the timing didn't work out and my reason was 
um, my sister's bridal shower, <laughs> and I had to be there for that. So I had to choose. I'm like, okay, I just couldn't go with the cruise ship, even though that was a really great experience. Like that would have been a really great experience, considering that most positions hire for like months or a year or like even longer. But from that position, um, it was only two weeks, and it was something to do with kids. So it was um supervising kids or like um entertaining them that sort of thing <laughs> but now thinking back I'm like whoa that would have been really intense to like spend like 10 hours with kids you know like it's, it's different too it's not teaching it's a different environment too right so I'm like okay you know um so that opportunity didn't go through but I think that now if you ask me if I want to do that now my answer is totally different I'm like I just want to relax on the cruise ship <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, there was another, yeah, there was another one that was a volunteer trip that's in, um, a province, like, in, um, around in Canada, so it's, like, it, it wasn't international, but it was basically, like, you could do, like, plant trees or, like, paint houses, that sort of thing, and I was gonna join this program because it, all the expenses were provided, um, for us, and, I actually signed the contract, but I didn't end up going with, with this one as well. I think it's also because I had like other trips planned for that for that year. And then, you know, I traveled so much <laughs> in the beginning that my manager was actually like, oh, like laughingly, jokingly was like, oh, Tina travels so much. We got to uh, stop her from like traveling. <laughs> and then it kind of made me think, oh, maybe I stay here and um, I guess do other things. I I don't regret not doing it, but then sometimes I think back like, oh, I these opportunities like I was this close to doing it, I didn't. Um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like how it went for me. Uh, with like I did do a lot of like travels. Um, I did like Europe trips, like two of them with friends. Um, I did like a tour group trip for young people, Kentucky, and also last year I did um i joined a program where i got to live um and work in spain for one month oh, and the wow. program is called remote year yeah yeah so, so like the, i did a lot um yeah. in the last six years basically yeah it seems like you yeah really busy and, and with a lot of different professional interests are are you wanting to um want i do writing full-time or do you think it's better to have it as a more of a freelance part-time sort of endeavor yeah good question um so basically i did explore that because i was thinking you know maybe i can have the best of both worlds right yeah. like i can do you know my full-time job and then um do freelance or part-time work like i've been doing that and for a while like i was fine doing that but i think it got to the point where it did feel like i was getting burnt out you know, where I was like, okay, I think I, I can do both. Like, it's just, at least, at least like, the freelance, it's fine uh, just once in a while. But at one point, actually last year, I took on a part-time position because I was exploring content marketing. Okay. And um, it was a really good experience. It was with a company that I really liked working with. And I started off as a freelance writer with that company. And, um, yeah, like, I, I really enjoyed it. But it's... Uh, this January, the first week, I I quit and um I am no longer doing anything on the side and it's so nice to not have that on the side. Right now, I do I am looking to <laughs> transition. Yeah, so I'm like if any of my coworkers listen to this. <laughs> okay, uh, well, yeah, that, that's awesome. I hope um uh, yeah, maybe when that transitions, you know. Fleshed yeah. out or, or established. I'll um, be oh, curious oh, to check in now. with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 I'm excited for you. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, so, did you keep in touch with anyone from Korea and have you gone back to visit since you left? So, like, um, obviously, my girlfriend and her, and her uh, yes. family, <laughs> I've met several times. Um, yeah, I've been to Korea three times since I left. Um, yes, winter 2017, summer 2019, summer 2022. Wow. Um, and, and she's visited, um, I think, winter 2018 uh, and winter 
twenty gosh, twenty twenty two winner. Yeah, I think so um yeah, so she um so we see each other, yeah, and um so that there's that um and our mutual friends that we have in Korea. Um I even met some friends in the US that, that were Korean that I met later when I went back. Um and I and I think um yeah at, there's times where I meet Koreans here then then I, I plan on meeting them when I go back there as well. So Yeah, I think there's that's um so nice. a kind of a network I have over there at this point. Yeah, Um you know a lot of people in Korea, like the probably Korean, more like than the in the US at this point, yeah. <laughs> I would Oh say. my god, really? <laughs> Which is funny, but yeah, honestly, I'm more of an introvert, but I am very passionate about learning about Korean culture, so it's just over time kind of grown in that area, but but yeah, the only expat I keep in touch with is you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, I didn't, it, it's hard, you know, like, um, uh, It was it was good that we got along well and we're in the same school district, so it was easier to meet. Um, you know, but when it came to um, you know, those weekend trips, you know, with expats, I would not. I was like kind of with that clique of of um, people that went to Seoul to, to meet their girlfriends. You know, like Um, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, you were. yeah, there was like there was like two other teachers I think in the same Yeah, there situation. were people like that. So Mm yeah, so that's kind of how it was. Like you know, it would have been nice to meet. Um. more regularly but our free times didn't align as much so -hmm. Yeah. Mm but but they, i had fun with them though like a few times for sure in, the, in that year and um yeah they, they were cool overall but yeah i don't know how about you do you keep in touch with the expat community or anyone -hmm. else Um, not a lot of people. Well, um, I would say that I, I like I follow them on Instagram or I may have on Facebook, but in terms of people that I actually like talk to, like keep in touch to this day, is Yeah. you, of course. Um, and then there's a few others, um, like Kinga, Billy, and um, Yeah. one someone else that's not. on my program um so just like a few people Yeah. and i haven't been back since um but i am planning to go back um That's right. yes i am and i'm like oh my gosh i'm finally going back like i i felt like this year is the year that i need to go back to korea <laughs> and um i haven't even told anyone yet really like i haven't told the people that like i already booked my my flight tickets so like, i just confirmed Oh, wow. everything just That's so well cool. Like, I still need to confirm how long I'm going to be there, but basically I have my return flight. So I'm going to be in Korea for, like, a week. Okay. Not too long, but a week. Yeah. Um, because I'm going to, uh, like, Vietnam and Thailand as well. <laughs> That's Oh, why. wow. It'll be the beginning. And then I'm going to Korea. Yeah, because I'm Yeah, going with yeah. a friend. So initially I was going to be by myself, but I'm going with a friend. And Okay. um, so Korea is at the very end. Um, and I'm hoping to see... A few people like I don't even know who's still there <laughs> Oh, to be yeah. honest like a lot of people a lot of people left I know there's people that are still there but then I don't really talk to them I keep in touch with them I mean it'd be nice to see them but if not like it's like you know like I don't only have so much time too but um um yeah so but I do hope to see like one really good friend who got married in Korea Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, good. um and then the local teacher that I was close with Um, I'm the high school student, so I haven't told anyone yet, but like I am going back and Awesome. I think for me before I wanted to go back around like in like five years, which is kind of like five, it's about that time. And I think for me, I just like wanted to go back after a really long time and then like, like see everything with like a fresh eyes, like fresh perspective and like seeing how much has changed since too. And Yeah. um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so excited for you. Um I'm sure they'll you'll be shocked at how much has changed um in that period of time and um I know. I'm but also it's really exciting um as well. pretty You sure know, so much like Dejan has like a massive new um department store now that has changed. like Oh. yeah, that it'll be cool if you do go to Dejan. Um but there's several Yeah, I'm new definitely things. going to go back to Dijon. Yeah, So, there's so several I only have, new things. yeah, I only have like a week, right? So it's really just so in Dejan that Yeah. I'm planning to do. Like, I don't Okay. want to like fast. It's going to be like a slow travel type Yeah. of thing because I think I'm going to, I'm definitely going to go back to my school. But the thing is, 
no one's gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, they all move on and like I just wanna like, go and look at the school and like you know reminisce all the memories. Sit there and hopefully, or even walk around the neighborhood and hope someone will like go up to me and say hi. <laughs> yeah, you never know. I mean, I'm there's a lot of them like, live in that lot of them live in that neighborhood and everything. Yeah. So, so there could be. But like, um, I I won't recognize. Any of the no, students. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they recognize me, but like I definitely won't recognize them because they're like older now. Before oh, they yeah. were, the they're, they're old now. High school age, most of them are. Yeah. So I'm just gonna keep my eyes open <laughs> and hope I bump into someone. But it was really nice that in the last like few years, I did actually meet up with um, the local teacher that I talked about that I was um, good friends with. She actually yeah. came to Toronto one time. So oh, I got cool. to meet up with her, which was so nice. And then um, there's also one expat that I did that came to Toronto that I, I met up with, actually. Uh, oh, Yusuf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, that's cool. Um, so, like, uh, it was really nice to just have, like, a dinner together and then catching up. And it was so nice because he was actually uh, returning home but he took like a whole year off to like travel and like enjoy his oh, life wow. you know before returning home so that was really That's admirable cool. um and i think like again even though i haven't talked to a lot of people from an expat group i follow them and i do enjoy seeing the updates because it's actually really interesting to see what people are up to nowadays like there are people that um have they filmed a movie like they were directing and filming a movie not like oh, our wow. passport to canada but it was like they actually they were doing a legit movie and then someone else was um like a few of them pursuing teaching and then there was someone who was doing like um some sort of like graphic design or designing and then someone was also like starting their own business and uh, clothing line and and all these things and then even one of them that inspired me to launch a podcast right so like yeah, yeah. um i think it's like, like mark in the korea we already doing something that was very brave and outside of our comfort zones and if you see them continue to do things like that it was really inspiring even one person actually um they miss korea so much that they left but they went back to <laughs> so it's like really so interesting cool. like yeah yeah like and then i think i don't think he's there anymore but then it's really interesting to see how and when's journey unfolds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. I think, um, yeah, we're all lucky to have the opportunity and to be trained as extensively as we were. Um, despite our lack of educational backgrounds, most of us, we were, oh, yeah. we were able to do Pretty a good much job. Most of us, yeah. Yeah, most of us. Um, yeah, the rigorous training provided through Epic helped us succeed as best we could. And um, made us more interested. A lot of us, uh, several of us, more interested in teaching in the future in some capacity, mm -hmm. or at least continue yeah. our interest for other cultures. Um, so yeah, I think it was looking back when, and and working in other areas, and, and how little training I received compared to that epic experience. I just it makes me appreciate the program even more because they put so much into um, preparing us for for that, and I think it really helped to reduce the amount of culture shock and uh, struggles in the classroom. And yeah, I'm just, mm -hmm. in retrospect, I'm really appreciative in how they ran the program. I think they did a great job. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it is a top Thanks. program. Definitely go it's through like Epic. Yeah. I don't think Hagwons are the way to go for new people, especially. Go through it's very hit Epic. And miss. Yeah, it's very yeah. hit and miss. But Epic is going to be more consistent. Kind of training too. Like they're yeah. not, not as structured as... No, no, it's structured. Um, and then, yeah, definitely like think about consider like not Seoul or Busan. Consider like a city, but not like you know. You just your money goes a lot Dejan. further. <laughs> Dejan, yeah, especially yeah. as if they're if they're the same people there. I I just thought it was really well organized, and um, the the rooms I had I had was excellent. I just think yeah, strongly consider Dejan. If you if you do want to go, I had a wonderful time there. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, we have. Let's see. Look on this program like here. What's next? What's next? Yeah, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> it's very blunt. What's next? Like we oh, we've done all these things, but, but what's oh, next? Man, no pressure. Yeah, but like, no pressure. Yes, like what's next? <laughs> oh, it's curiosity. I see. I see. Um, yeah, like 
Yeah, what is carrying us? <laughs> I, did, I have an announcement. I didn't reveal it yet for the podcast, <laughs> but last time I was in Korea, I did get engaged to my girlfriend. So <laughs> wait. Engaged? Yeah. yeah, engaged. That's right. <laughs> what? I know. We kept it. What you know, is kept it low key, but it was last summer. Um, last summer. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of um, it's like it's tough to find a date, you know, because we both have to decide where we're gonna settle and everything like that. But um, but oh yeah. Oh my god. We got, she, we, got the, we got the ring, and um, yeah, oh we're still. <laughs> Yeah, I got I got in Korea. Um, we got to settle on a date. You know, it's it take, it's complicated, but yeah, we we definitely are committed um, to each other. So so that's. Oh, just, I didn't even yeah. see that on your notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, mean, I surprised you. you I thought, I thought you would have looked at the you. notes, but yeah, you're good. No, because you updated at the last minute, right? So I yeah, didn't look at it. Last minute? Hey, I just I wrote it down at the last minute, but I've been I've been oh, thinking. Oh, thank God! Yeah. I'm glad I hear it from you versus reading. Yeah. Whoa, you're <laughs> The Big whole world? <laughs> I am. I sure am. So hopefully it works out, right? No, wow. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I want to start with that. Um, you know, I think it was just the beauty of Jeju Island really brought out the um, the romantic side of me. So yeah, and just wow. you know, <laughs> I um, I recommend going to a beautiful island if you want to get to the next phase of your life. So, um, but yeah, overall, um, yeah. That's so funny. Uh, yeah, it's fun. I gotta go get your island. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it yeah, was, yeah, the beauty tell us more it. details. So tell me more later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you more later for sure. Um, no, I'm yeah, <laughs> so that, so, yeah, and if there's a date, when we get the day established, I'll have to get that out there too. But yeah, definitely look more, um, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, so so life just changing. figuring your that whole out. life is gonna change. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it will, it will, for sure. Um, oh, wow. Another thing. I'm excited for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to add more to that. Um, we can move on to anything yeah, else. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, I am graduating this this May in my Master of Science in Education. It's been a lot of work um, to work full time and take challenging graduate level classes. So I'm excited to. Um, I've learned so much. Um, and but it, it will be nice to have a little more time to rest um, for a bit and, and um, have a little more balance in, in, in my routine. So that's a thing that's it's exciting. Just two more months and I'm done. Um, so yeah, that's a big one. And then last thing is, um, you know, I'm working on in just continuing to improve the exchange program at my university. It got really decimated because of COVID and um kind of reorg stuff as well so just being a part of um just bringing that program back and and having these exchange students change the lives of um our domestic students and also having their lives change through their exchange experience it's just something really exciting so i'm helping with all manners of that program to improve like marketing um, support everything so i feel like i just have so much passion for this position um so just that's another thing i'm really focusing on as well and, and it, it makes the days go by so quickly because there's so much to do but it's like making a difference so i think that's that's another thing as well so those are kind of the three things big things wow, that are that's, next that's great like congrats <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, thanks congrats on getting engaged but also you're gonna graduate soon and then i'm sure like i have so many questions you know? <laughs> like i guess you're i don't know if you're maybe you're figuring out like what's next too yeah yeah there's like, still and, things are fluid and in, in that but yeah overall you, it's you a, have a lot of big decisions to make i feel like yeah right? for sure yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah like big decisions going on but yeah, uh, that's for sure. exciting yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, how about for yeah, you, Tina? Um, What's next? Not nothing <laughs> as exciting as yours, but I think for me, it's like honestly, even with this question, I'm like, oh, uh, I mean, I'll be like very like um transparent that like there's just so much that I'm trying to like figure out in my life right now, but um, and I think for me, like one of the reasons I didn't really go back to Korea yet it was because I wanted to like when I go back to feel like oh like they had I kind of had some kind of expectations that there were like certain things that would have 
um, I may have achieved or accomplished, um, you know, by the time I go back. So, um, but I am very like happy to go back to Korea. And I feel like I'm ready to go back. And I like I'm going back in a happy state, at least because um, the last two years, years two free years and pandemic was really tough and i think that was like it changed a lot of things i right? it changed i felt like i changed a lot from the pandemic and like who i was like pre-covid is so different from like who i am now too yeah. um so then um yeah like um so like if we did this podcast episode maybe like a few months back or last year i probably wouldn't have been in like the best mood <laughs> or like <laughs> or mental state but then now i'm like feeling a lot better still recovering from like the whole pandemic and like right isolation and all of that but uh feeling in a better place in my life right now even though there's just so, so much that you know there's so much uncertainty but then um um, I am happier too, and I think one of the reasons I'm happier too is also because I I left my part time job and I have more time to myself now. Um, one of the reasons being I wanted to make more time for like rest and play, and like also kind of like give myself space to figure out my next like step. And and I think I need to actually make time for that transition too, right? Yeah. Um, after my trip, because I have like all I can think about right now is my trip. But um, right, like right. there's all these things that. I have in, in mind for now. Okay. Well, uh, closing final words, it looks like. Last yes, part. it is your uh, any last words to last. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally. Yeah, this, literally. This is the end. Um, well, it's been nice. Um, it's been nice knowing y'all. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. um, final words uh, for, yeah, this fun. For, well, I just wanted to really sincerely express my appreciation to you. Tina for organizing this. Um, I feel like it's something where like I'm I would definitely be passionate to be a contributor towards, but just don't, I don't know, just not experienced as much in the organization or not having that drive to do the little things necessarily to make it happen. So I'm just so thankful that you um, helped organize it and, and did the editing and all all the things that make it possible. So I did end up um, doing a little bit of myself for work, uh, po a podcast for work for a little while. And then I realized how hard it was. Um, it made me appreciate you, you even more. So um. I'm just really uh, <laughs> thankful for it. Yeah, this is possible thanks to you. So thank you so much for allowing me to contribute to this and be able to reminisce. And, and I do think that um, this podcast would be great for aspiring expats and aspiring teachers um, to give a little more insight into the EPIC program. Um, so yeah, overall, just wanted to thank you uh, personally and thank our audience as well for your interest. Um, <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and just, yeah, just don't, um, don't ever settle, like seek out your dreams because you never know um, if it could be your last opportunity or not, you know, life is so unpredictable. So if you have an opportunity for a unique experience such as this, I, I encourage you to go for it. Um, so you have mm -hmm. no regrets. So that's just kind of the way I, I view true. things. So that's a yeah. great, um, final message. I think, um, like it's for the audience, but also like it, it totally resonated with me too. So I felt like, yes, don't settle. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to have you on the podcast. I know like we wanted to start one on our own, but I'm glad that the podcasting still happened for both of us, yeah. like doing this whole Korea talk series and you doing it at work too. So I think you're a really great um, speaker. <laughs> so definitely like keep doing that too like and share your experiences you have so much to share and i'm so excited for you for your life thank you <laughs> what's to come um yeah and uh, i'm really glad yeah i'm really glad we did this i can't believe it's finally coming to an end <laughs> like so yeah. bittersweet like you said yeah. and it's like we started like 2020 but then i know like, you've been really busy with work and your masters and i am like have my own thing too so with each episode it did take long for us to release it 
So uh, thank you to the audience for whoever actually <laughs> tunes in and still <laughs> continues to. We actually have listeners, Wes. I just don't know who it is. <laughs> yeah. You know, but we do have listeners. Maybe not like a bajillion people, but we do have people listening and tuning in. Um, awesome. And it's nice to know that even though at the end of the day, it's like, it is kind of like more like for ourselves, like for, you know, for many years to come to listen back on, but then also we do hope to inspire other people and for those who are interested in doing something similar to this, not necessarily have to be like teaching, but to live abroad or to, you know, live out an adventure. I think it's, it's just, at the end of the day, just being true to yourself and yeah. and what you want out of your life. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I think this is it. <laughs> okay. This is it. All right. This Thank is you it. All. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.